Hello everyone. In my previous session, you have learned to enable or say install IIS 10 for developing web applications using Classic ASP. To proceed further, IIS must be installed and configured on your device. If you haven't done yet, then first follow the steps what I have demonstrated in my previous video and then come back and proceed with this session. I'll put the link of the same in the description below. And today in this session, we shall explore the graphical user interface of IIS, a bit about the application tools, and in the end, you will get to know how and where to write and execute a basic ASP code. Once you have installed all the desired IIS features, you can get to the IIS graphical user interface by typing INET MGR in the run window. Click on OK or hit enter. If you are getting this window with these options for ASP, that means the required services are installed properly. You can get this IIS manager window by typing IIS in window search or even from administrative tools. Let me show that way. First close this window. Open control panel. Hit enter. Select small icons from here. Select the administrative tools. And here it is. Double click to open this window. Now before we dive into details, let's have a quick look on this interface. As you can see, this entire interface is distributed into three different panes. The left one is called connection pane. Here you will get the list of connected servers. The middle pane is where you find all the features like application security, request filtering, logging and many more. And on the right is the actions pane. In my system, I have installed FTP features. That is why I am getting these many options for FTP. If you haven't installed on your device, then you won't get this feature. You will get only these many things. And this is what we need for ASP development. This is the server node. If you expand this, first thing you will see is application tools followed by sites. Microsoft introduces a new feature in IIS, which added the benefit of being able to separate processes owned by an application from processes owned by another application. And this feature is called worker process isolation mode. The advantage of this isolation is that if a process hangs or crashes, it enables IIS 6 to continue functioning and you can simply just shut down the offending processes. IIS version 6 enables the concept of application tools using worker process isolation mode. IIS comes with a default application tool called default app tool and that you can find in the IIS manager window. Let me show that. Expand this server node. And here it is application tools. Application tool form boundaries around the applications to prevent an application from affecting another application on the server. And thus, errors in one application pool will not affect the applications running in another application pool. For example, if an application pool is recycled, then only the applications in that pool are affected and application in Another application tools are unaffected. I will demonstrate this example practically in my upcoming session. So deploying applications to different application tools enable us to achieve the degree of application isolation in terms of availability and security. And that's what we need. You can also add an application pool by right clicking on this application pool. Select add application pool. This is the interface you will get for now. Just leave these configurations, we shall explore further. The next node is sites. Here you can add and manage websites and even FTP sites if it is enabled on your device. In order to develop an ASP web application, one should already need to know HTML, CSS and VBScript or JavaScript. CSS is optional but it is required if you need an application with a better look and feel interface. JavaScript or VBScript 
will be surely required for developing a dynamic web application. And in the list of required softwares are an editor wherein you will write your ASP code, any web browser of your choice, and the PIIS web server. Any editor that supports Unicode characters will do the job here. In this course, I will use VS Code as an editor. This is a roadmap for writing and executing a simple ASP file on the local host. Syntactically, an ASP code uses delimiters to enclose script commands. Within the delimiters, you can include any command that is valid for the scripting language you are using. Collectively, it is called a ASP scriptlet. This is an example of the ASP scriptlet. I will explain the syntax soon. For now, just simply add this code in your text editor. Now, the next question is where to save this ASP code? To answer this, just try to understand this scenario. In any Windows operating system, if you save any file with .txt extension, then by default, the operating system recognizes it as a text file and maps with notepad.txt application in order to open that file. Similarly, an ASP file is saved with extension .asp and it will be mapped with ASP.dll file in order to execute. To do so, the concept of virtual directory is implemented. A virtual directory maps to a physical directory on a local server's hard drive or a directory on the remote server. And thus, it provides an abstraction layer that decouples application from data stores without revealing the actual physical path. Let me show you the default virtual directory for this purpose in IIS. And for that, open run window and type in 9 f 10 gr Hit enter. Here first expand the root server, then expand the sites. Here it is. This is the default virtual directory. Right click on this one, select manage website and choose advanced settings. Observe here, this is the physical location where it is pointing to. Select this path and open in Explorer. So, this is the actual physical directory that this default website is pointing to. Now, the conclusion is, if you want to execute any ASP file, then that need to be saved either in this location or you may create a new virtual directory and customize that for pointing to your desired location. I have summarized the entire conclusion into two different methods and we'll see them in action one by one. So this is the roadmap of the very first method which we are going to proceed with. Now open Visual Studio Code. Add a valid ASP code over here. So open delimiter. Response chart write a message from the server. First ASP case. Close the delimiter. And that's it. Now I'll save this file in the default root directory of IIS. That is in C drive INET pop triple w root and this is the directory. Give the file any name, I'll give it as a demo with extension ASP. And then click on save button. You can see this file cannot be saved in this location due to Lack of permissions, you are getting a warning message over here. So, first we'll assign permission to this folder. So, for that, click on No. Right click over here, click on Properties, click on Security, click on Edit, click on Yes. And now I will give full permission to this IIS user. That is full control permission 
and uh, the same I will assign with others as well. You can assign full control permission to the number of users you want. For now, I will assign to this IIS user full control. Click on OK. And now you save this file with .asb extension. Click on save. As you can see, successfully file is saved at that location. Cedra, Vinetwork, Triple W root and demo.asb. Now let's execute this one and for that open any web browser. In my case it is a Mozilla Firefox. And here just type in local host forward slash name of the file. It was demo.as. This was the name of the file. Hit enter. As you can see, the same text I got what I wrote in my editor. First ASP page. This is the another method wherein we will create a new virtual directory and it will point to your desired location. So first I'll save this file in a different location. Say I'll save it in the E drive. As in demo.asp only and uh, save and now open my IS manager. Just right click on this default website. Choose the option add virtual directory and enter any desired name like I have entered testing pro. And now I will point to that particular location in E drive. It is and then click on OK. Now in order to execute, open the web browser and type in localhost name of your virtual directory which is testing pro in my case and uh, followed by name of the file with extension .asp. Hit enter. And the file is successfully processed. This file can be executed directly from the IIS manager window. Let me show that way as well. From the left pane, select your virtual directory. And from the actions pane, click on browse. And the file will be opened in your system's default web browser. It is as in my case. Observe the URL showing the name of the newly created virtual directory. But here the content is not processed and I'm getting an error. Let me show you how to fix this one. So open that IIS manager window and uh, in the left pane select your virtual directory and select this default document. Click on that and here write down demo.asp. Click on OK. And now open the browser and reload the page. And that's it. You can see the file is successfully executed. Earlier we were getting an error. The theory behind is that when IIS processes this testing pro virtual directory, by default it will look for some default documents. And the list of those default documents are mentioned in IIS manager window. Choose your virtual directory, select this default document and these are the lists which are by default provided through IIS. It is recommended to use any one of these names instead of demo.asp as a name to your landing page of your website. So that's it for today. We shall check out the developing cycle or phases of ASP files in my next session onwards. Let me know if you get any error while executing an ASP file in your Google Classroom or in the comment below. Practice well and keep learning.